yesterday we spoke about the four type of vision of the Uttama Adhikari. So Uttam Bhagavad. Uttam Bhagavad. Yes. So uh, I remember once in one lesson I, I heard that uh, the Uttam Bhagavad he sees everyone as love for Krishna but I, I am not. So is that only the third type of vision or is also in the third? Because in the third we see that he sees his, his own love for Krishna and he thinks oh this tree has love for Krishna as I do. Uh, it's in the, that is related to the third and the fourth. Uh, in the third there is only all are in the shelter of Krishna and devoted to Krishna but according to their own nature. And in the fourth uh, vision then Every being, even the trees and the flowers and the cows and rivers, all love Krishna. But in the very bath, they are saying that they love in the same bath that I have. But they always think that they have no brain. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, common. As soon as uh, someone has this, I'm not even speaking of the gopis Mahabhav, only when brain comes, then this experience is there. Premara Swabhava Jaha Krishna Premara Sambandha Say Krishna Nahi Mora Prema Ganda The meaning is that as soon as there is some a touch of Prem it's the very nature of Prem Premara Swabhava Krishna Premara Sambandha same money, Krishna Mori Nahi Premaganda. That person considers that I have not even one drop of prayer. Even, you know, if you have a bottle and in the bottle there's some um, alcohol or anything like that. If you pour it all out and then you wash the bottle, then there's no alcohol in there. But if you smell, the smell is still there. So this is called Ganda, fragrance. So as soon as love appears, then the person feels, I have, or to speak of no love, even the fragrance of love is not in my heart. Nothing at all. So that's the, one of the symptoms. Ruchi, asakti, bhav, prem. When prem comes, I have no love. So, mm, so to me, that's a very important part of prem. Because dainya, humility, and praying, they have a karya karna sambandha. That means they are mutually the cause and effect of each other. When humility increases, praying increases. When praying increases, humility increases. So they are mutually the cause and effect of each other. So Radharani, she said, Na prema gandosti durapa megharo, krandami sobhagya param prakasita. Bangsi Vilasana Lokanam Vita Bima Bibharami Tat Prana Patanga Kam Vita. I have no love at all, not even a scent of love. Then why are you crying? Oh, I'm just making a show. Hmm? I don't believe you. No, I'll give you the proof. If a fish is taken out of water, then they cannot live. They flap in anxiety and then die very soon. But I am not seeing the beautiful face of Krishna playing on his food, but I am still alive. This proves I have no love. Akaitava Krishna Prem Jeno Jambu Nadahim Say Prema Niloki Nahal Radrani said, There is no love in this world. Pure love, which has no self-interest, no cheating in it, is like the gold of the Jambunad. Jambunad Ahim. Jambunad means that on the top of Mount Meru, uh, Mount Meru is very, very high. And on Mount Meru, there are Jambu trees. That means um, Jambu is a rose apple very fragrant and the jambu fruit falls from the mm, top of the tree and falls down the mountain mm, of Meru 80,000 miles and when the fruits hit the ground they break and the juice comes out and the juice starts to flow 
and it flows through uh, the southern side of Ilavritavash. So this is a, a river of jambu juice, that is called jambu nad. And it's so fragrant. And when the mm, waves of the river mixed with the uh, dust on the bank of the river, it makes mud. And when this mud dries, it becomes jambu nad heim, gold. And the demigods, they come and they take this gold and they decorate themselves with these ornaments. In this world, there's only 24 karat gold. <coughs> but this is 25 karat gold. It's not even available in this world. <laughs> <laughs> that is the gold from which the ornaments of the demigods are made. So Radharani said that just like this Jambu Nadheim, this very pure gold, it's impossible in this world, only in the heavenly planets. So in the same way, there's no pure love in this world. Why? Then how would there be separation? Because love is strong, very powerful. More powerful than destiny. So if there is praying, then destiny cannot separate the lover and beloved. And if by some miracle they will be separated, then they will die in separation from the separation. Hmm? So either way, hmm, in this world, uh, there's no permanent relation. Everyone is separated. Hmm? So if there were love, then that separation wouldn't happen. And if the separation would happen, then they would die, so they would not be feeling separation. <laughs> so, uh, this is the bhav of the Mahabharat. They never think they have any bhakti at all. Hmm? Matuyana na stipapatma aparadi na kastana parehat pe pilajame kimbruve purushotama when Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami met with Chaitanya Mapu, they were crying and falling on the ground again and again and offering prayers. Oh Purushotam, there is no one more sinful than me, there is no one more offensive than me. I even hesitate to give up my mm, unvirtuous activities. So what can I say to you, my Lord? So Rupa and Sanatana, they are the highest level of Mahabhagavats. But they feel like they have no prem, no love. They feel they are very offensive and very fallen. So it's common not to two moods, all moods, four moods. Any other question? The, um, I'm wondering about the... Um, because I have heard you say different um, th different explanations about the uh, our behavior, that it is dictated by uh, impressions in our chitta and by the interaction of the three modes of material nature and also determined by karma. So I'm wondering how these things interact or if it's three yeah, different points of view. No, no, these are not different things. Mm -hmm. In Bhagavad Gita, Arjun asked this very important question in chapter 3. He said, O oh Krishna, by what is one impelled to do sinful acts, even against one's own will, as if by force? Hmm? So conditioned soul is like this. Huh? Even you don't want to do something, but any way you feel, your body, your mind, your senses are forcing you. Hmm? So Arjuna is posing this question to Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. So the essence of the question is, the inner meaning of the question is that Paramatma is in the heart and he is neutral. So if Paramatma is inspiring all the living beings, if he is neutral, why would he, and also he is your friend and he is mm, Transcendental. Why would he inspire you to do some sinful activity? 
So Paramatma cannot be inspiring the living entities in their worldly activities. On the other hand, what is in inspiring them is a sanskar, impressions. In other words, you have done some activity in the past. When you experience this activity, the mind records it. Uh, that when you're experiencing it, that impression in the mind there and then is called pratyay. Hmm? Just like if you take a photograph with it, you point a camera at something, whatever it's pointing at, then whatever is in front of the lens is shown on the screen. Mm -hmm. So that very uh, <coughs> picture in your mind of the world that you see as you're moving, that is called pratyay. That's the vritti of the, con of the chitta in that very moment. And then as soon as the object which is in front of you moves out of the way, then obviously that vritti also goes away. But it doesn't disappear completely. That vritti goes into the subconscious mind and uh, is stored there as a sanskar. Now, as we are moving in this world, a situation triggers uh, those sanskars. So, if you see someone who looks just like a person, that in your previous life you have a loving relationship with them. Then when you see someone, it will trigger that sanskar and the memory, oh, I was so happy, will come. The impression of enjoyment and then you are, want to meet with that person. Or you see someone who is like a person in your last life was your enemy. Then, oh, then you don't like this person. So impressions are being triggered all the time by the environment. And they come into the conscious mind. Now, Arjun's question is this. A sanskar which comes into the conscious mind, which was dormant before and now became active. It's just like a picture. So a picture cannot force you to do anything. Mm -hmm. You see? If there's some ice cream on the table, Hmm? And then I hold up a picture, look. The picture cannot force you to eat the ice cream. <laughs> hmm? So in the same way, if you see the ice cream, then the samskar of your previous enjoyment of ice cream comes in the mind. And then seeing that, uh, I want to eat you. <laughs> you see? But how can a picture make you do something? It cannot. So this is the essence of Arjun's question. By what are we forced to act even against our own will? Because Paramatma is not making us act. He would never do that. And our sanskars are only like pictures. So pictures also cannot force you. So what did Krishna say in reply? What was his answer to this question? Kama esha krodha esha raja guna sumat bhava Maha shano maha papa vidyanam yaha varinam avritam jnanam etena jnani no nityavarinam he said, it is calm, lust, only, which is coming from Rajagun, the mode of passion. This is your enemy. This calm, avritam jnana meitena, this calm covers your knowledge that you are a soul. So now, Let's see, because your question, you're asking, are sanskars making you ask, act, or is karma making you act, or are the gunas making you act? So, the sanskars are your karma. Because what you have done before, that's mm -hmm. the sanskar. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's how the karma is playing in here. Mm -hmm. Now the gunas, Krishna said that kam, lust, comes from rajagun. So, the gunas have, um, or maya, has two vrittis. That is called the vidya vritti and avidya vritti. The function of knowledge and the function of ignorance. So sattva guna is the vidya vritti. And the raja guna is the avidya vritti. And the raja guna, when it becomes more intense, then it, it is unstable, it turns into tamagun. Right? So Rajas and Tamas together, they are mm, give avidya, and Sattva gives vidya. Eh? So 
the sanskar is the impression of the past karma which is coming back hmm? maya the gunas that means uh, in this particular case let's say the avidya vritti ignorance so it is avidya which is making the conjunction between you the atma and the impressions in your mind understand we were discussing that yesterday what is avidya avidya is that which is doing the adhyas the superimposition of the upadi of your mind which is full of the samskars you see so this is why uh, krishna said the cause is is calm lust but that calm is coming from rajagun that is avidya avidya vritti avritam gana meitena you see so when first the sanskar comes and then because avidya makes you identify with it then you act on that if some sapugun came high higher sapugun then vidya vritti would be there then when the sanskar comes you would say this is a sanskar in my mind it's just a picture it can't make me do anything <laughs> understand see? so krishna describes that in chapter 2 verse 72 Apuryamanam vachala prasistam samutra bhupa pravisanti yadvat tadvat ya kamayam pravisanti sarve sashantin apnoti na kamakani Krishna said, just as the rivers enter into the ocean, but the ocean never changes its shape. Hmm? In the same way, that person into whose mind the desires are coming, the sanskars are appearing, but he does not act on them, that person attains peace. You see? So this is your free will. Hmm? When we are in avidya, in ignorance, all the activities are going on by karma. And that means the reaction. And we are identifying with them. That is Rajagun or Maya. <coughs> like this. So our karma is going on. We think we are doing everything, but no. Prakite kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasha ahankaravi mudatma kartaham itimanyate The living being bewildered by the influence of false ego thinks himself the doer of the activities which are actually carried out by the three gunas of Prakriti. Okay. But if a person comes more in Satogun and has the association of sadhus and Shastra, then they can learn, oh, there's such a thing called false ego. Hmm? And this activity is wrong. Hmm? So if a person uh, gets good association and receives some uh, guidance, some knowledge, now their um, agency the agency of the soul because soul is also karta well, soul is also the doer it's just not the doer of the material activities so the soul in the conditioned state he's the karta because though he's a soul and transcendental he is drawing the senses and mind towards himself mamaivang so jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana mana shastandriyani Prakriti stani karshati. Karshati is an active verb. It means the living entity is drawing towards himself by his will. Just like a magnet can attract iron, the living being is a karta, is also a doer. <coughs> and by his will, he is drawing the mind and senses towards himself. Hmm? And he's struggling so much. Huh? But now, the, in the state of ignorance, the mind and senses are acting according to the samskars. Mm. All this deep siddhanta is there in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna said, the living being does not initiate activities. He does not perform the activities and he does not bring about the, his meeting with the fruit of the activity. Swabhavas tu prabhatate. All of this is initiated and activated by Swabhav. Swabhav is the name for the aggregate, the total collection of all the samskars in your chitta. You see? So 
So you are not initiating the activity, you are not doing the activity, you are not getting the result of the activity yourself. Everything is going on just by swabhav. And that uh, those samskars are anadi, they have no beginning. So karma is anadi, without beginning. You see? So for the conditioned soul, he's the doer. But what is he doing? Only he's drawing the senses and mind towards himself. And because he's turned away from Krishna, he's identifying with that by avidya. And then the gunas are doing all the material activities in this world. When he gets good association and some vivek, when sattva gun, when you change your life, when you're not just sleeping and eating and drinking and smoking and watching TV, you become little sattvic and some clarity comes, then vivek, discrimination rises. Hmm? Then you can get some shakshitva to be the witness of your mind. Instead of your identity being merged with the mind, you are separate. You are the witness and your mind is the object of your witnessing. So in that state, when any samskar comes, then you can see, oh, this is some impression, this is my past karma, and you ignore it. So now you're becoming free from karma. That's why it says, Gyan, Gyan is only from Satogun. Satvat Sanjayate Gyana Gita Krishna says, Gyan comes from Satogun. But Gyan is like a fire that burns the karma. Why? Because you, you are uh, illuminated inside, you are not in the darkness, down in the moats with the frogs and the toads. <laughs> <laughs> now there's some illumination inside, you can see your mind working and you don't follow it. You follow Shastra, follow Gurudev. Huh? So that's uh, Gyan, discrimination, Vivek, discrimination. <coughs> so you become free from karma in that way. Mm. from the control of karma temporarily jnana cannot give liberation only bhakti can actually destroy the karma harinam jnana mm. cannot jnana mm. will give you some relief for some time but due to the offense of neglecting the lotus feet of the Lord again one will become covered by ignorance is it clear? yes good. Yeah, thank you Guru Premananda. So, have a break. What time is it? Atma is attracting Karshati, the mind and sense. It is spread that more. What does it mean? Is it, does I am not saying. I uh, <laughs> don't know anything. But Krishna has said, Mana Shastan Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati in uh, chapter 15, verse 7. So in the Baladeva devotion, in Govinda Bhasha, in his commentary on Vedanta Sutra, he explains the meaning of that. Because there's a, there's a sutra in Vedanta, um, Shastrata Kartitvat, sorry, Karta Shastrata Tvat, which means the soul is Karta. Because we will say we're not the doer, but that's not true. The soul doesn't do material activities. But soul is karta. Hmm? If the soul were not karta, a doer, then he would not be responsible for anything. Mm -hmm. hmm? The scripture would be nonsense. Mm -hmm. The Vedas say, dharma chara. Hmm? Follow your dharma. Satambada, speak the truth. So who the, if, the, if the jiva cannot, uh, has no uh, ability to do anything, then who are the Vedas talking to? The body? Huh? So Balaveda Dibhushabhu describes, unless the act, this is an important point, because for the Mayavadis, they say, spirit is not, has no kartrit or no power to do, it's not doing anything. Uh, it's just impersonal, no features, no activities. But Vedanta Sutta says, karta shastra tattvat, the soul is a doer, because the scripture says so, because of the meaning of the scripture. So Baladeva Devotion Prabhu says, all the scripture will become meaningless. Yeah? Because the scripture is giving commands, imperatives. You must do this, you must do this. You Who is the scripture talking to? So Atma must be doer. So now the question is, why does Krishna say, Karta Amiti Manyate? Bewildered by false ego, the soul thinks he's the doer. Hmm? Of so, of material activities, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? It's just like if there's a wild horse. Huh? You are holding on to the horse, but the horse is running crazy. You cannot control it. <laughs> right? So you are not running. The horse is running. You're just holding on. <laughs> so in the same way, <laughs> the mind and senses are doing everything. The gunas are doing everything through the... To, with the um, moving the mind and says the soul is just holding on <laughs> and it's out of control uh, so uh, Baladeva de Bushin gives that example how does he do it because the soul is not manifest any arms or legs how will it all hold on so he said he does it by his icha his will uh, because the Paramatma has given the Jiva icha shakti uh, Gyan Shakti icha Shakti and Kriya Shakti First, Gyan Shakti, the power to know. If you don't know anything, you can't desire anything. But once you know something, then Icha, you can desire it. But if you desire something, but you cannot do it, then it's also useless. <laughs> so three um, mm, functions, Paramatma has given to the Jiva, mm, Gyan Shakti, Icha Shakti and Kriya Shakti. So by the Kriya, the Jiva is a Karta. And he is desiring, and that desire has the power to attract the mind and senses to him. So when the material body dies, then Krishna says in the next verse that just as the air carries aromas, so similarly the soul carries his conception from one life to another. That means that when he leaves the body, the soul who's drawing the mind towards him takes the subtle body with him to the next body. That he's taking his conception of life to the next body. <coughs> so that the soul here means karta is drawing yes. the mind since he's yeah. act. No, no, he's just drawing them towards you. They're, the gunas are making them act, oh. not the soul. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That's it. <laughs> you have to make that discovery. The soul is not making the senses act. Yeah. The gunas are making the senses. The soul is only attracting the gunas to himself and the gunas are acting by themselves. And that attracting means desire? Yes, desire. yes, by Icha. The Icha Shakti. So, that you can see the verse, everyone knows the verse. Mamai vang so jiva loke, jiva bhuta sanatana. So we're talking about Atma, the jiva. Then what's the next line? Manaha, the mind. Shastra, sastran indriyani, and the senses. There are six senses, including the mind. Prakritistani, being situated in prakriti, karshati, the jiva, he is attracting them towards himself. It's very clear. Yeah, we know the verse, but we did not understand all these intricate things. <laughs> See, we cannot understand by reading. Hmm? It's just like sitting in the dark. You sit in the dark, you open the book, what will you see? <laughs> you have to turn on the light. So Sadhu Sangh is the light, then you look out, and then you can understand. <laughs> I see the Guru when Raj used to say like this. <laughs> when we're in Sadhu Sangha Salat, then you can understand what the scripture is saying. Guru Premanandi. Guru Premanandi.